Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Sonali Jagati, Senior Resident at Opsan Gaini Department, SCB Medical College, Katak, having secured an All India rank of 3546 in NEET PG 2021. So just last month, I was lucky enough to attend a CME which was uh, organized under the wings of Foxy as they were celebrating the Know Your Blood Group Awareness Week. In this, there was a strong emphasis which was laid on uh, the importance of knowing the blood group and RH typing, uh, especially for the management of RH negative pregnancy. So uh, why is this so important and let's learn about this high risk pregnancy condition. So first of all, what do you mean by RH negative? It means that there is no D antigen present on the RPC. Remember that there are other antigens also like uh, capital E, small e. This is expressed on the short arm of chromosome 1 and it is roughly expressed at 38 days of gestation. So when does RH negative become a high risk pregnancy condition? When a female who is RH negative blood group conceives with a male partner who is RH positive blood group they have a 67.5% chance of having a positive blood group fetus. So what happens during that time? There are certain conditions which precipitate fetomaternal hemorrhage. What does fetomaternal hemorrhage mean? Basically, the fetal circulation enters the maternal, uh, fetal blood enters the maternal circulation. So what are the conditions which can precipitate fetomaternal hemorrhage? Of course, the most important being the labor. Apart from that, there are other high-risk conditions like any abdominal trauma. There can be even uh, high-risk pregnancy conditions like twins. Also, it is uh, during early pregnancy uh, losses like uh, abortions, uh, manual removal of placenta, molar pregnancies. Uh, these are some of the very important risk factors which can precipitate. Some of the procedures that we do, like internal podalic version, external cephalic version, amniocentesis, choriovillus sampling, all these can also uh, precipitate fetomaternal hemorrhage. So when these precipitating factors are there and there is a fetomaternal hemorrhage, what happens that when the fetal blood enters into the maternal circulation, there is sensitization. So what does sensitization mean? It is that when the fetal uh, RPCs which have this D antigen enter into the maternal circulation, the maternal uh, immune system reacts against it and they start producing antibodies. Remember, the first time they are exposed, it, they produce IgM antibody. Remember that IgM does not cross the placenta. So the first pregnancy is usually uneventful. But Subsequently, the, uh, there is production of IgG antibody and that is why the subsequent pregnancies become high risk conditions. So when we are talking about fetomaternal hemorrhage, I just wish to highlight some of the tests that we can do to uh, know about the fetomaternal hemorrhage. Now there are qualitative tests and quantitative tests. Rosette test is a qualitative test. When it is said that if it is positive, it is high fetomaternal hemorrhage. If it is negative, there is low fetomaternal hemorrhage. KB test, very important, clehar petke test. It is a quantitative test. Remember that in routine clinical practice, we do not do these tests because first of all, they are not available everywhere considering our low resource settings. Also, it is time taking for the results to come and they uh, uh, just delay the management. So these are more important from a theoretical as, uh, perspective. Also, it's an alkaline denaturation test. So how do you, uh, uh, so what do you do next to know that there is sensitization or no? So we do a test called ICT. Now this is where we need to follow the algorithm. For a first antenatal visit, we have to do her blood grouping and RH typing. If she is negative, then you have to do her husband's blood group and RH typing. If that is positive, then you have to go for an ICT test. It is always better to do ICT test in every RH negative female because sometimes they might have uh, uh, conceived with another male partner who might be positive and there might be abortion history which she might conceal. So it's always advised for any RH negative female, it's better to do an ICT testing. So what does ICT mean? It is indirect Ohm's test. 
in this we are basically uh, testing the maternal serum for the presence of antibodies so instead of directly checking for the antigens we are checking for the antibodies and that is why it is known as indirect combs test remember we are taking the mother's blood sample for this test so ict you do if it is negative then we will be repeating it at 28 weeks why we do at 28 weeks it is said that uh, from many studies and research that has been done they, it has been found that 28 weeks offers good uh, protection for the current pregnancy also so at 28 weeks when you do ICT and again you find it negative you are going to administer her entity immunoglobulin now these entity immunoglobulin what they do they coat the fetal RBCs which have the antigens on them so when they enter the maternal circulation the maternal immune system is unable to recognize these uh, antigens and thereby it prevents primary sensitization so what is the dose entity is given at a dose of 300 micrograms it is given im at 28 weeks if ict is negative very very important point also if she is in her early uh, trimester pregnancy loss or abortion that you have to give that is less than 12 weeks then you have to give 50 micrograms im now this is the recommendation given by acog and this is what we routinely follow in our clinical practice also rcog also has uh, made uh, its own guidelines it, uh, they tell that at 28 weeks you are going to give 100 micrograms and again at 34 weeks you are going to give 100 micrograms so this is uh, important to know both the guidelines but ACOG is what we follow in our uh, clinical practice and this is what is followed all over India. After you have given her entity at 28 weeks, you are going to safely deliver her uh, around 39 to 40 weeks. Postpartum, you are going to do the baby's blood group and RH typing along with the DCT test that is direct Combs test. If the baby's blood group is positive and DCT is negative, then you are going to administer her the postpartum prophylactic dose of anti-D which is the same uh, dosage. Remember that this is a very very important question that has been asked even in uh, INRCT previously that when are you going to give the postpartum prophylactic dose. So when baby's blood group is positive and DCT that is direct Combs test is negative then you are going to give the dose. Direct Combs test is done using baby's blood sample. Remember that RH negative is uh, not an indication for cesarean section. So vaginal delivery can safely be done unless there is any obstetric uh, indication. Also remember that uh, ICT if positive then entity has no role in uh, already sensitized female move to the next scenario in which if the female uh, has ICT positive now you have to look for the titer the, uh, the lab report will give you a titer in that if it is more than the critical uh, titer that is more than 1 is to 16 you have to do a MCA PSV Doppler now why is it done it is done to look for fetal anemia it is done every weekly it is uh, given uh, converted into MOM so if it is more than equal to uh, 1.5 mom now it means fetal anemia is present now we have to assess how much anemia so i'm going to do a hemoglobin of the fetus by doing chordocentesis through the umbilical vein it is done uh, with the uh, from the intrahepatic portion of the portal vein of the fetus and uh, that is if hemoglobin is less than two uh, standard deviation or hematocrit is uh, more than 30 percent then it is called mild anemia and if it is more than two standard deviation below or hematocrit is less than 30 percent it is known as severe anemia remember that if there is mild anemia i can i have to repeat it every weekly checking her hemoglobin and uh, hematocrit status of the fetus and i have to deliver at 37 to 38 weeks if there is severe anemia and the gestational age is more than 35 weeks i can deliver uh, of course by giving at uh, as corticosteroid coverage i can uh, deliver the fetus now suppose uh, the fetus is less than 35 weeks, I am going to do an intrauterine transfusion. 
intrauterine transfusion can be done from 18 to 20 uh, weeks of gestational age. Remember in intrauterine transfusion we uh, use packed uh, RBCs. Now suppose the uh, value is less than 1.5 mOm. So again I have to monitor every 1 to 2 weekly for fetal anemia using MCA PSV and also I have to do the NST and BPP 32 weeks onwards and again I can deliver at 37 to 38 weeks. The, so this is very very important algorithm as far as the management of uh, sensitized uh, RH uh, negative pregnancy is uh, con uh, concerned. Because remember that if the fetus has anemia it can cause uh, hemolysis leading to jaundice and even dreadful condition like hydrops fetalis. Hydrops fetalis per se is a very important topic and it's a big topic which uh, I'll um, uh, maybe try to make a video in a subsequent uh, session. But remember that these are very very important high risk conditions but this can be really prevented by giving this magical drug called anti-D and with strong uh, intrapartum monitoring. So uh, again some few take home points that uh, you have to remember is that uh, early cord clamping is beneficial if the female is not sensitized whereas if she is already sensitized then there is no point in doing early cord clamping. Uh, the normal delayed cord clamping can be done. Also it is said that when we are giving 300 micrograms of anti D, it prevents 30 ml of uh, fetal maternal hemorrhage and 15 ml of uh, fetal RPCs. Yeah. Now when we are discussing about RH negative pregnancy there are two more uh, conditions which are always uh, uh, you know spoken about. One is the grandmother's theory in which uh, the first pregnancy the mother becomes sensitized. Uh, that is because the grandmother uh, is was RH positive and this mother was already sensitized to the RH positive uh, uh, RBCs in utero because of which her first pregnancy uh, was sensitized. This is the grandmother's theory and the second thing is the mirror syndrome or the Ballantine syndrome. In this uh, when there is fetal anemia so what happens there is hypoxia in the fetus so there is placentomegaly this leads to polyhydraminose and hypertension in pregnancy like condition in the mother that will cause uh, ascites that can cause again uh, uh, you know uh, polyhydraminose ascites and hypertension uh, like uh, hypertension in pregnancy like condition in the mother so uh, when the baby is having hydrops and the mother is also having edema uh, polyhydraminose so basically they are mimicking each other so this is known as the mirror syndrome so these two conditions you can also remember this is a very very important topic as far as INICT and NEET PG is concerned because they have asked in the previous years also uh, also it's a very very important uh, condition that all the residents must be knowing when it comes to the management because routinely we come across these patients in our OPD or even in our uh, antenatal wards and you should very well know when to terminate, when to advise for ICT and what to do if ICT turns out to be positive. Remember that after giving anti D there is no point in uh, doing another ICT test because usually ICT comes out to be positive after giving anti D. Uh, it is weakly positive. So remember all these points. I, I have tried to concise this uh, vast topic. Uh, and uh, uh, simplify it. I hope you guys have understood the concept. Any doubt feel free to write in the comment section. I'll be glad to clarify. Thank you and have a great day ahead.